Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hollow Feed, the best place to sit on our phones and look at our notes. How are you guys doing today? My name is Claire. We have. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hey, it's Ron. <laughs> and just in the nick of time, I'm Patrick. Hello. Um, we're hoping that you have you are having an amazing Saturday on this fantastic. What? what it's, Mar- wait, it's, it's March. March. It's March. It, it March. Is- How is it March? <laughs> March. Oh already. my goodness! How is it March? Um, so today, what we're going to be talking about? Um, some Star Wars. Are you excited? Who's excited? Yes, more Star Wars Rebels. Oh no, no, wait, nope. no. that was last week. Okay, so if you guys did not see last week, uh, last week we talked about the the finale of Star Wars Rebels, uh, John Favreau's involvement with the new live <laughs> action Star Wars, and discussed uh, Mark Hamill's Hollywood Walk of Fame star. Uh, for today's topics, we're actually going to be talking a little bit about the Last Jedi novelization, the deleted scenes from the Last Jedi, some Star Wars robots in space, and some Steven Spielberg Star Wars news. Who's excited? Oh, uh, let's go into that. Okay, but so, first, yeah, other stuff. Uh, but first, let's yeah, let's get into some other stuff. So, um, with. I'm reading notes as I'm doing it. Hello. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be talking about Star Wars Rebels anymore because the show is <laughs> over. And I know, Ron, okay. you're so, you're so, you know, obviously you're, you're crushed on that. Um, now it just gives me the ability to binge watch it in two days. Which two is days. Two days. Two days two to days. binge watch everything? Two, yeah. Two days. All right. It's go doable, clear. But you're not okay, doing anything then. else those two days. No. That's, <laughs> I mean, clear. like, yeah. No, I don't do anything else besides watch TV and, um... Um, play video games. I had to think about what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off today uh, talking about The Last Jedi novelization, and I'm going to give that over to Patrick because he's actually read some of it. Some of it. Some of um, it, most of it. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So continue into that. Well, some of it got teased for me before I even started the book. But oh, no. Oh. Not spoiled, teased. The book teased. opens with Luke Skywalker and his wife. What? So I was like, Wait, okay, what? I have Wait, to man. read this. What? Wife? Yeah. Yep. Why? Wait. Hmm, should I what? tell you or should I just tease it and let everybody else read it? Um, I, I, I don't know. So I, I'm going to put a spoilers uh, thing on this. So mm-hmm. I, I want to be spoiled. Ron, okay. do you want to be spoiled? I don't mind that spoiler, but it's just like amazing to hear all this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for anybody that has not read the book already and has not like or doesn't want to get spoiled, this is your spoiler warning. Come back in like 10 minutes sure. and watch. Um, continue. So any predictions on what that could be? Um, uh, it's Mara Jade, and they had two children. One is um, uh, Jason Solo. Uh, Wait a minute. Like, no, 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 no. Jason. 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 No, 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 no. no. Okay. We're, we're going we're gonna to go way off here. Okay, right. Not to be confused with Jason Sindula from Star Wars Rebels. No, what? We're, we're gonna have, anyway, I have to mention that. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm so out of the loop with, like, what is canon and what's not and, like, legend stuff. I don't remember. No, what was Luke's kid's name? Ben. Cause ben? Ben. Well, okay, so, I, I you know, I, I'm almost there. Almost. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time since I've dealt with legends, which is still canon in my side, in my eyes. As far as you're concerned, it never yeah, went away? But, yeah, it never went Prediction? away. Prediction? I have nothing at this point. Prediction? I, have. I was going to say Mara. Okay. Yeah. Nobody Mara wanted to predict yeah. that it might have been a dream? Uh, um, oh. <laughs> I think it's always a dream. Yes. So it Just was like uh, the last Jedi. It was only a dream, guys. It Luke having actually a <laughs> Luke having a dream about his life on Tatooine. Had he never, I guess, in this version, he grabbed the droids before they had made it to Ben, and uh, stormtroopers. Storm Star, Star Wars didn't them. happen. Basically, yeah. What what would have what his life would have been like? Well, he would have died. His wife on no, because the uh, stormtroopers came and took the droids and didn't didn't kill anyone. Why? How? Wait, is this is it really? This, this was is, his dream. And what, what you discover okay. is because he's blocking his connection to the Force when he's awake, the Force only gets in at night when he's dreaming. Just as Ray had visions of the island, he's having these visions of what his life could have been, how it could have been different. That's interesting. And his wife, which is Cammy, which was someone from deleted scenes from episode four, um, she's realizing that he's like full of regret that he didn't do something more than just be a moisture farmer. Okay, so you just dropped the name Cammy, mm-hmm. the name of his wife. Okay. That's the name of his wife in his, in his dream. In his, his dream. Yeah. And this is actually in the novelization? It's the first chapter. It's the prologue. Wow. And, That's how it starts. And it's really interesting that it's Cammy because mm-hmm. this is a character from like deleted scenes and yep. stuff from A New Hope. <laughs> Which yep. is super interesting. That he hung out that with at Tashi Station. That is ridiculous. No, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. Stop, stop. 
Just ugh. But it's just a dream. But still, that mm, I'm not gonna go there. That's too. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Too real. Claire's, Claire's turned up now. Yeah, I am turned. <laughs> she can't see it. I, I can't. Or she's mind blown. I'm not. Nah, that that's. Uh. From there, it it sticks pretty faithful to the film, in, except that it gives you a little more inside the characters' heads. There's a few mm-hmm. few other things that tie it pretty mm-hmm. well to another novel that came out that was centered on Rose and Page. So you see a little more of a connection to that book and what was going on in Dakar before they um, evacuated. There's a memorial service for Han right before they leave. Um, so I enjoyed it so far. I'm not, I'm not done with it yet, but I've enjoyed it so far in that you get a pr- pretty um, accurate, you know, sticking to the story, um, whereas some other novelizations came out right when the film did, so you still had some things in there that got cut from the film. This seems to be the story that was told in Last Jedi plus more. Plus, plus a some, little like little extra. What were people thinking when they were floating that's in space? Just regular books, though. Yeah. So it's, it's a book. It's a book. <laughs> it's a book. So it's are book. we are, are we tying this in the current canon, or is this something also just? Yeah, it is is this now canon? Do you think like? Uh, the way they've approached the novels before, as long as it didn't contradict what was in the film, it was considered canon. And if something had changed, like there's some changes from the time the novel of the Force Awakens. Things that took place in the novel that weren't in the film that I don't think are considered canon anymore, like Kylo Ren recognizing Rey, that kind of stuff. I think they've said if it didn't make it into the film, then it wasn't canon. But I'm sure these little side stories that fill in some gaps, there Hmm. there doesn't seem to be anything that conflicts with the story they told so far. So The Last Jedi is a little bit more canon than The Force Awakens. I would think so, because they waited. They waited a couple months to put the book out, so they had time probably to edit down anything that had changed from the, the final version of the film is in there. Plus more, okay. not final version of the film. Since it, uh, once it went in the can. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's um, enjoyable though. So like if you, you know, I've always wondered how it would be really cool to find someone who never saw the movie and have them read the book first. <laughs> but, wow. but good luck with that. Like who's um, going to read a novelization that didn't yeah, see Yeah. And it? then all of a sudden the, the fans I, just go wild on the internet, on Reddit and everything. And they're like, but that can't happen. No, mm-hmm. it was this. And before I know. I know it'll one just person blow up that hasn't online. seen it, so. I, I might I might have them read read the book. Um, talking about like uh, just deleted scenes. Did I, I know that us three watched them before the show? But have you seen the? No, I've actually not... avoided them so far. Okay, so. but um, you can spoil it for me. Okay, totally so it's fine. a lot of filler. Is it? It's yeah. it, it's. Oh, yeah. You can see like, why it was cut. It, no, it's all Cantobite stuff. Uh, uh, gotcha. the, it, it's all Cantobite stuff, and then there is the Luke morning scene, which I. How, we'll get into that in a second and then there's um like some more phasma fin fighting stuff and mm-hmm. it's the one where she <laughs> that's sh- the one i heard about yeah she yeah. shoots five stormtroopers and yes. then goes and hits and then he shoots her and then it cuts that it. was a really interesting cut too it was a very interesting cut and i didn't particularly like it uh there's some like other things that are very like like towards the end of the, uh, I, I got the uh the digital copy um a few days a few days uh few days ago um and i checked them out and i was like oh, okay there was this one scene where um luke was uh luke and uh ray were on the island and they were in that like cave mm-hmm. that jedi cave and there's uh some boats full of like little uh the the caretakers, caretakers. but they were r- what luke said uh by the way spoilers on everything everything that, spoilers. everything, that everything, that everything in this in this episode is going to be spoilers um they're, the caretakers apparently, because all the caretakers are women, so and I understand why they cut it because it's not really child friendly, and I understand what they're talking about. But they said uh, Luke uh, was uh, telling Ray, "Hey, these uh, neighboring island folk come over once a month to raid, pillage, and plunder the uh, the the housekeepers mm-hmm. and the, the caretakers and everything." and she gets all mad and says, oh, I have to go and save them. Oh, my gosh. What, what are you doing? Why are you saying, you know, basically he said, do not interfere. And she ran, runs off. Mm-hmm. And then it was basically to teach her a lesson that uh, if you want to be uh, the Jedi Order says, hey, you should be calm and reserved and not interfere with people's this, that, and the other mm-hmm. thing. There needs to be, you, if you're going to go into something, you need to understand that if you're going to go in something, it has to be worth it to be able to balance the force. Exactly. And yeah. 
she, you know, busts into their, like, little camp and whatever, and they're actually, like, having a party. And I kind of understand, like, it's kind of an innuendo of, like, there's – and there's male versions of the caretaker. Mm-hmm. So I kind of understand what they were going for. And I understand also why they cut it. But, like, his laugh in the end resembled Joker's laugh. It was really? it was amazing. It was actually interesting to hear that part because for we something like that – We had to go back, like, three times to listen to it. Like, yeah, it, it would be very uncharacteristic. Yeah, and I, Luke I think to be able to the things that they that. cut out of the Luke, but the, the things that they cut out about Luke were unchar- uncharacteristic of Luke, which is good that they cut it because it, I mean, <clears throat> not saying that The Last Jedi was very Luke Skywalker because obviously we have issues with it. Um, and obviously Mark Hamill has issues with it. But the thing is, like, specifically that scene, like, he basically teaches her to not jump unless if you're 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a good lesson, but I think they could have mm-hmm. done that and put it in the movie in a different way. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but I'm glad that they cut it. What, what are your thoughts from my Well, I've been wondering about that because I can't remember if the book is – uh, I think it's called The Visual Dictionary. They used to be called Visual Dictionaries. Mm-hmm. Chris, do you remember what they're called? Yeah, it's still called The Visual, Visual Dictionary. Dictionary. Yeah. When that came out, it showed – a variety of that species of the of the caretaker and all the different uh-huh. different type of like towns people and stuff and I remember looking at that going okay where was this and then it heard it had been cut um, I have a question though was was that piece that was cut was that the third lesson because he had told her um, I'll give you three lessons and we only see two before she leaves oh, wow so the way no, the film plays it's out it's not it's not I, one I don't of the think lessons. we uh, they left it out intentionally so we don't know what the third lesson right that's what I always assumed yeah. that it's I just she left thir- before she got the third lesson but I was yeah. curious if yeah, I'm wondering because now I didn't even think of that I've only seen the the film twice um do you think that's a big plot point for episode nine then is that the third, third lesson to be the way? Because That's why obviously he, that is why it was left open. I oh, think. is it? Okay. okay. So, so that if, if they want to do it in episode nine, they can, but they probably won't. So I mean, then, I think they're going to retcon the entire movie. Anyway. It, you see, even talking about that, going back to the last Jedi novelization, I, it's all, it almost sounds like there's just going to be a lot of retconning I, I going just, from I, here on out and a lot of it, just changes to the Star Wars universe. Um, well, I don't think anything in the novelization retconned anything. I think they just gave you, <laughs> told you a little bit more of what was going on that you, you couldn't do without some really clunky exposition of mm-hmm. people going, so, you know, oh, Leia's awake, and she says, this is what I was thinking about when I floated through space. Instead, you actually get to see inside her mind, and yeah. at that point, they do tell a little bit about what, what Luke did and didn't train her on and why she was able to use the Force, what she was good at, going mm-hmm. all the way back to when she um, heard Luke calling her in Bespin, and that was the first time she really felt it and, and that he taught her more of that type of, of force use of being able to reach out and there was a point that she used to be able to feel Luke anywhere and in, in, no matter where he was in the galaxy until he shut himself down so I think the book focuses a little more on on Luke disconnecting from the force with the mm-hmm. except with in the film they only really mention it once when Ray figures it out that he shut himself off and there wasn't yeah. really a good way to do that in the film without it at least in my opinion just being the really really clunky kind of bad dialogue exposition whereas in a, in a novel you've got more time to, to talk about yeah, stuff but there was nothing that I felt was a retcon or or yeah. um, changed the story okay mm-hmm. um, the other uh, the, there was a few things uh, uh, in our notes that we wanted to cover um, specifically uh, there was um, ex- exposition um, in the beginning of the movie where uh, Poe was catching Finn up and it was kind of like clunky and stuff didn't need to really be in there and he basically just like oh yeah blah 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 and then you know where it cuts to because uh, the first line in, uh, po- for uh, Finn's dialogue is where's, where's Ray, where's Ray? Right. so yeah. it, it was the conversation of like what happened in between there and there and I think where they cut it where's Ray I think that shows even more so where the character is. It's just like, where's my friend? Mm -hmm. Where's this person that I've been on this adventure with? Blah, blah, blah. And basically, he also says in the deleted scene that he is not a fighter. He's still Mm -hmm. like this coward that's just kind of running away. He doesn't want to fight the First Order. And now that they know where the base is, blah, blah, blah. And and it was just like, it was a lot of filler and stuff. And I'm just like, eh, whatever. It was was pretty discombobulated. Yeah. Amongst all the deleted scenes that we've seen in previews so far. I think that was the biggest one that was just like, that really doesn't need to be there. And then... Well, that's further evidence then that they really did um, cut the book down after they were done with the final cut. Because clearly they filmed more after he says, where's Ray? But in the novel... As he's walking around, he's wondering. He when he first wakes up, the first thing he thinks is, you know, am I still on Starkiller Base? Because mm-hmm. that's the last thing he remembers. But the chapter does cut right when he says, "Where's Ray?" Just like the film. So they clearly okay. went in 
you know, and, and trim the novel down to match up with the film. Okay, so that's well, that's good. good. That, that, that's good. Um, and then uh, the other one that we want to uh, uh, mention was the Rose biting uh, Hux's finger, oh, yeah. which just kind of, like, shows – because he says something about, like, I think he's from the planet that destroyed her planet or something like that, conquered. That's kind of what I got from the scene, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm incorrect Well, there was, an implica- there was an implication – of and I forgot what location Hux mentioned, but there was some implication that they knew each other from the past. Yeah, there was because um, or there are people knew each other. And I think that's what exactly. It was. And I think it well, was the way. Did she was. say? I'm trying to remember. Did she say her planet w- had been conquered by the First Order? Or was it by originally by the Empire? It was Be- originally by the Empire. So that would make sense because, because he has connections to the Empire. But it was a specific expansion of the Empire. Yeah. Right. So I, I think wherever he is from was from that mm-hmm. expansion and I think that's and what she does is like he puts her, his finger under her chin like haha this is you know whatever mm-hmm. you know the like your mind whatever and she bites his finger and like shakes and stuff and it's just it's silly and it's stupid it's very let's poke fun at Hux again blah blah like which I understand why they do it he is the comic relief of the first order ask yeah he got, but, he like, got fooled by Poe. Oh, that was great. That, that was like my <laughs> favorite. That, that's on like that one of my phone call. Ugh. Ah, it's great. Supposed phone call. Um, but uh, like, I, I just because he's 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 taunting them and stuff, and then she bites, and it's just silly and it's filler, and I I guess it shows a little bit uh a little bit more where she's coming from, mm-hmm. rather yeah. than like let's make fun. But like this actually, I don't think it should have been in the movie. I think where they cut it in that scene was perfect, but if it was in there, I don't think it would have took in anything away. I don't mm. think it would have really added. I think it would it's an interesting scene, but I don't think it needed to be in there. I think I, I found it actually I found it that it could have been a scene where, yeah, I mean Disney does this where they love to ease uh the tension of what's going on between the resistance and the first order. With comedy um, or so- some with, with, something. with a little bit of comedy. And I think that's part of Rose's character yeah. is to do that. It is because <clears throat> she kinda comes off as as a little uh funny and at times even some comedy relief. Yeah. Uh, for her on her part. So even maybe that 30 seconds of that of biting Hux's finger would have been, you know, a, a great addition. At, at least that's my opinion. That's my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't, I don't think any and, and it kind of gives, like I said earlier, about that implication about their history. What went on in their history? Can we go? Um, mm-hmm. Is there some other background story in the novels or anywhere else in comics or the current canon where that's included about talking about the Rose and and Hux relationship Huxer, and if, if they had some is. type of connection um, at this point I don't the believe there is but I'm hoping that they expand <laughs> on that and like and this also goes into the the thing if they expand on that does that make this deleted scene canon or not and I don't think uh, deleted scenes are canon um, but if they expanded on something from a deleted scene that and made it canon would that make that deleted scene canon what do you think no, I think once it's cut, it's not canon. Even if it's referenced, you have to see it because it could have happened a different way. Okay. You know, so unless they reference it specifically, and, and I then... think I think a lot of times with the with the these comedic relief pieces, <coughs> they film them and then sometimes they work if you have a really tense scene and another tense scene, and then you break it up a little bit. But the way that that whole section was going of the film is mm-hmm. that would have been right in the middle of a very like not in between two separate tense pieces it's right in the middle of you've got that going on kylo and ray happening um the ship's trying to get down to the planet and it was probably just didn't feel right that, yeah. that you feel tense and then you start laughing and you're supposed to feel tense again not breaking up two separate things so i have a, i feel like w- even without having seen it that i'm i'm good with that cut <laughs> <laughs> okay um and then the the majority of the the the, the other cuts this, was... the, the majority of the other cuts i, I do want to add one more thing and talk about the whole luke cut thing um, in a second, but there was like twenty minutes cut from Canto Bite. Oh my gosh! Yeah, like that was that was a that was a huge cut, and I felt it was unnecessary. I felt it was unnecessary to leave it in for the final, yeah, like, for the final product because the, the chase scene uh, with the what are what are the uh, fathers fathers um is like twenty. Those are those minutes. are those, those like the, as you referred to earlier in our discussion, like the Star Wars camels, camels or the Star Wars something. camels with the pumps. Without, yeah, humps. without without humps. <laughs> they look like bunny camels. Um, they do. <laughs> like, well, what are they? They're supposed to be horse, cat, bunny, what is it, lion, lion, lion or something. Little I'm not entirely thing. sure. Um, but they cut out so much of that scene, and I understand why they did. 
like it's just the the scene like they they play the entire scene with the the the, the parts I made it in to the movie and the parts that they mm-hmm. cut the entire the entire like that entire chase scene encompassed I think a ten minute scene that it was just like this full thing and like I liked it and like I liked seeing the CGA and where where they cut it and everything and it's good but the way that they cut it that's what they needed to do I don't think that they should have um, kept kept that Any, whole thing the, it, it, it's just it's too clunky we got enough from the final product we get the we get the understanding that yeah. Canto Bite is, is is a stark contrast between how Rose grew up because that's part of Rose's background yeah. and, and how what they're, they're very materialistic yeah. it, it's all about money and it, you it's basically really see a lot our of, current society yeah it, it's kind of like a touch on that you, you just see a lot of yeah. rich um, people from different uh, planets or whatever, even introducing uh, and showing little aliens um, from different places here mm-hmm. and there, just gambling, throwing away their money. And that's yeah. pretty much about it. Re- literally, that's pretty much about it. Just different shots all put together in, a, in not quite a montage, but just all cut and put together. Yeah. It, it did wasn't necessary at all. Wasn't that's, necessary. that's it. Basically, you're not missing anything. Pat. Doesn't yeah, sound really. like it. Doesn't sound like, like it. I mean, it's like if you told me there was a fourth, fifth, and sixth lap of the pod race that I hadn't seen yet. Pass. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so going on from there, um, um, there was some news um, about <coughs> Star Wars wor- robots in space. Now, without getting into that, w- what do you think that is? Like I want to know before we get into anything or talk about like what do you think? Because I know that you weren't here. We're sending all kinds it. of stuff in space right now. I know that. Uh, I think um, they sent a Tesla up, didn't they? Uh, yes. So Elon now we're sending. Yeah. yeah, he sent up uh, a Tesla. Elon Musk uh, sent up his personal Tesla Roadster into space. So I'm in fine with them SpaceX. sending anything from Star Wars up. <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, I believe uh, if Chris, I'm not mistaken, you have um, some insight on the whole NASA thing, correct? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> um, we our, got the shoulder shrug. Our uh, usual uh, co-host RJ actually wrote the notes this week, and he added this, and then he couldn't make it to the show, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, so basically, uh, our notes say uh, NASA robotics engineer W. Chris Verdon Verdone has said that NASA should strive to build robots such as R2, D2, and BB-8, and I think what I, I agree because I know what it means. What, what, what do you think that means? Promotion for Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what, what do you what, mean? What does it mean? Like, yeah, what does it mean? Like, robots? Yeah, like, are, do you think that they're space? actually going to be sending up an R2-D2 and a BB-8? Or what do you think that the, the uh, like, try, I'm trying to form words. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to I know what on. you mean. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, um, I don't know. I think it's probably cool. marketing and they might be I mean if Elon Musk can send a car up <laughs> see why we can't yeah. send yeah. like a droid up or something. we have we have we have uh, some word from our uh, affiliate our associate here RJ um, joining us online and he's he's saying that planning the robots is is, is kind of definitive and the one scientist who was talk, kind of talking about it and having this idea was that bringing these robots or, or quote unquote droids into space would just be something I guess NASA scientists could draw inspiration from. For, so, is he? It, was he specifically talking about like the utili- utilization of how R two and BB eight are versatile and can do more things in space? That's what it sounds like to me. That's like, what it sounds like. That's kind of what I was, of I, was, you know, I was trying to get at that, but I couldn't. I mean, form words. If you look at if you look at NASA, I mean, I think the possibilities are there with how. Fo- how NASA is progressing and being able to have this type of technology where they have, I mean, if we're going to use the word robotics, I mean, they have robotic arms to reach other different satellites or robotic uh, mechanisms, you know, for lack of better terms, because I'm not a NASA scientist. Um, Are you sure? No, I'm not. Um, I don't know why I did that voice. Are you an expert on droids, though? Uh, No, not definitely Mm. not. But I'm just Chopper and R2. Anyway. Just Chopper? (laughs) Chopper and R2. Yeah, wait. Why are they saying just uh, a BB-8 or an R2? Why not Chopper? Yeah. Too much attitude? Or, like, I mean, I would would, would would assume not C-3PO because he's whiny and annoying. But he's also not. I mean, he doesn't really repair anything. What about K-2? He just walks. Oh. K two died. Oh yeah. Well, spoiler. Rest in, rest in peace. <laughs> rest in peace. K two. 
Um, <laughs> it, I would, I would have loved, I would love to see a scene where BB-8 does the whole thing again, where they're just, where the NASA, uh, where NASA shuttles just go into rotation, and BB-8 all of a sudden does his Spider-Man thing and just projects his little hooks onto the, oh my onto gosh, the sidewalls. <laughs> of of the shuttle or any spacecraft that they're in, so I think I think the idea is also because um, they've had a big thing about promoting science and and especially mm-hmm. towards the kids, how they can how kids can get involved, uh, schools, different colleges, high schools, whatever, um, to get these people involved and motivate them into understanding science and probably putting Star Wars into space is some something that inspires them to be able to build on that. And uh, basically move forward if that's how the force works. Yeah. So that's th- not how the force works. <laughs> yeah. I, I was waiting for that. I'm like, <laughs> no. You made it too easy. <laughs> that's, I know. I was waiting for somebody to make a comment on that. Um, but I think I think that's pr- probably. I assume that's one of the ideas as well too. RJ wants you to notice him, senpai. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, RJ? Hey, RJ. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what he was saying, he, he was. Uh, Primarily just saying that, like, the, the versatility of, like, R2 has, like, a welder in, inside mm-hmm. and then he can project and he can he can be, like, a phone and, like, a you know, all of these things. And the versatility of a robot that is like R2, not, not specifically talking about, oh, yeah, NASA's going to build an R2-D2 and put it in space. See, that that's, would be really That's cool. what I thought when you first told me. I'm thinking Dude, that's what they're going to send an yeah. actual R2 unit up with, with a holographic message for whatever <laughs> alien life they found to come help us because they're our only hope because we're doomed. Ah, this, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. we do have um, – actually, we just got uh, we just got a call who's actually for some, from uh, a fan, a listener, who um, has some insight and wants to discuss this. Um, I assume his name is I, – I think his name is Taylor. Yeah. If yeah. he'd like to join in on the conversation and what we're discussing about NASA's involvement with Star Wars and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I just Welcome like to just, the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> I just – I was thinking about how, like, you were mentioning the BB-8 thing. First off, I want to say I think that that's a cooler idea than R2, personally, because I think I'm more of a fan of BB-8, but it's – Well, what about Chopper, though? <laughs> what about Chopper? <laughs> He's not <laughs> – but, Robot uh, with sass and attitude. <laughs> uh, you know, or like droid, a, I'm sorry. Like Siri with a tequila shot or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, accurate. I, uh, <laughs> great. I, li- I like the idea. I think I uh, I think I get what uh, you know she's saying about the idea of R2 being like an assist droid out in space, kind of rather than like taking the jobs that everyone like is so afraid of with droids you know like it's like more like you have a helping hand out there in space mm-hmm. rather than like someone taking everything away from you which i could totally kind of get down with i've always because who hasn't wanted an r2 like you know an actual one i want an actual r2 i i, right? I, I want it i want one i always wanted an r5 d4 but that's just me <laughs> r5 d4 mm-hmm. oh that from one. where i firstly would go again bb8 bb oh. yeah um <clears throat> Yeah, the the versatility for that, um, I I think could be massive to be able to, like, a, as like an assist droid to say make a repair on the uh, space station or you know something like that. You can send that out instead mm-hmm. of sending like a person with a rope. Are we, are we worried about like a Big Brother R two though? Yes, of <laughs> course. Oh yeah. Okay. Obviously, I mean like you have to you know. Is that where the SAS comes in then? Yes. Like. Maybe we just do you, I don't know. I don't know. I personally like I wonder if it, like if it would get to a point then like with the droids where like they would just start communicating with each other. It's Skynet. Things. It's oh, yeah. the precursor <laughs> to Skynet. Well, I, mean, I, you know, but like, it's I, I was sitting here for like two minutes trying to figure out what that was called. Dun, dun, like, what dun, is dun, this? Dun. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. It, you know, that's a precursor of Skynet. I think that like from what I get, because NASA is like a public kind of mm-hmm. like it's not private like Elon <laughs> Musk and everything. Uh, so, like, I think what they're trying to do is by entering in the progress of, like, creating an assist network of droids, it kind of makes the playing field of construction for the Death Star more of a communal effort. So we don't have so much of a crazy group of people owning up space, I think, is kind of what they were getting at. The kinder, and, gentler Death Star? Yeah, a kinder, <laughs> you know, one for one all. That instead one of that doesn't blowing, destroy an planets. An American Death no, Star, No, it destroys planets by... Uh, Making them uh, 
it, it is <laughs> making them great. Making flowers grow and stuff. I'm so done. No, I, no, so I, no. I was gonna, I was gonna say uh, making them uh, sprout uh, pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. <laughs> You can get Matt Damon to assist with the droids as well. Please, too. Start yes. Going, uh, <laughs> start going plants and everything else on a different planet or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or <coughs> mm, Matt Damon. No, not, mm, no. Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. He's got all the plant. He's got all of the, the, the he's, he's got just, all the. It's <laughs> just him and Transformers. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, he's got all the experience dealing with all the robots. <laughs> Transformers. Yeah, exactly. They're like. What they- <laughs> but they're just gonna blow everything up in space, and they're not gonna—they're not gonna benefit in any way. I don't see that happening. I can't. Now, now Matt Damon, actually, you know, NASA is like this part of this government agency, and we—we're we, totally taking this thing on a whole different tangent. What here, happened, guys? guys? Yeah, we totally deviated from the original conversation, it's okay. but it's okay. We're geeks. This is what we talk about. Um. And, and and if I mean let's let's think about it. If Matt Damon can put his oh shoot I, I don't know if I can say this feces and everything's going green, and if droids can help out with that, shoot, why not? I'd watch a Smithsonian Channel based on that. What? <laughs> <laughs> if they do a documentary of like okay here's droids in space with NASA. What do they do? <laughs> Process feces. I think that's the kind of coolest thing. Kind of growing up watching this stuff. It's kind of like you grow up thinking it's all like sci-fi, and then we're at this point in time where it's like real talk. Is yeah, coming it's, up, like, it's like this is stuff that's actually going on. Yeah, like people who are actually creating potatoes with poo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would rather they be building lightsabers. That's more important. Same. Priorities. <laughs> that's like one of the handiest tools is to have a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. I mean, or an right? astromech droid. I lo- that's it. Where's yeah. the scissors? Just get the lightsaber. <laughs> 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 get a finer cut on paper. Um. But I think I think that is uh, now. If, if we do see the this whole NASA and Star Wars uh, partnership, so to speak, uh, I think that would just obviously promote a great great idea for people to get into science to see just to see the uh, adventure and type of possibilities that there are. I mean, I mm-hmm. mean, let's talk about a different franchise. We might, you know, we'll see Careful. probably some light speed or some other type of speed light traveling <sighs> capabilities. Do you think Do you think Disney would Come. jump in on it? Like and create like a space <coughs> princess because they're with because yes, they're with Star Wars now, right? So like it would well, involve yeah. them. A space princess? Yeah. yeah, you know, like a like a so to, many up there to get people interested in like science. They create like a space princess, and she's like up in space with R two like building droids. That so, sounds so, very nineties. So yeah, very aerial. Like up where they walk, up where they float, down where they, they walk. Really, at if this I knew that song by heart, I could. A paraphrase to make it space uh, themed. Yeah, Ariel goes on surface. Now she's on the moon. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> and upgraded again. Yeah, if I, if <laughs> she, I she gets a whole different type Disney of exploration. And, like singing, I would sing like a space <clears throat> version of the. Buzz Lightyear has his possibilities now, becoming real. You finally find his daddy. <laughs> 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 if if anybody is watching live, <sighs> Patrick is now like I don't know why I know you guys. <laughs> What show is this? <laughs> <laughs> the Hollow Feed, where we just All talk right. about anything and everything. <laughs> Star Wars and everything ra- random. We're just, oh we're my just God. getting off it's, topic. It's, it's St. Patrick's um, Day, guys. We have, we're have we sober. We're all sober, by the way. For now. Yeah. For now. For now. <laughs> for now. Hey, it's um, RJ's fault, I mean. Yeah, it is. That's RJ, true. The, yeah, this is RJ's this fault. Is, this is all RJ. We blame it. it glad, gladly, he's not here. Yeah, I mean, he did write the notes, though. <laughs> <laughs> I ho- thank you for uh, for anybody listening and watching with us. Thank you for joining in. I please, also want to uh, comment with along with us and your 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 thoughts about um, the anything Jedi novelization. And everything mm-hmm. that we're uh, talking about today. Yeah. Please. Also, I do want to say uh, thank you for Taylor for calling in and talking to us and putting his little spin on what what we were talking about, and adding to the conversation. We really do appreciate it. Um, and obviously uh, going still back about to princesses that, in space. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to go on to that now? Um, okay, Patrick brought it up again, so it's his fault. Yeah. Princesses in space. Awesome. I just picture um, Princess Leia walking around the Death Star saying, look at this stuff. Isn't, isn't it, neat? it neat? Doesn't it make... <laughs> Thanks, Ron. I feel better. Does jumped anybody in with me. know where I can find my home complete? <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I thought we were done with this. No. 
<laughs> no, because her helmet exploded. Um, right. Wouldn't you anyway. say she's the girl? The girl that has nothing? Yes. Yeah. I think Rapunzel would have the best Leia buns if she were to cosplay. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> like the hugest, biggest buns in the Star Wars universe. Oh my gosh. You no, know. I think that was that that that. <laughs> sorry, no, 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 no. The biggest oh, buns in the Star Wars uni- universe has to go to Jabba the Hutt. Oh. <laughs> See, this is a conversation I like because <laughs> I like big buns and I cannot lie. <laughs> uh, done. 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 <laughs> Mic drop. Dead. We can't drop any mics in here, otherwise. <laughs> We might get <laughs> we might eat, we'll get in trouble Drop for these mic. for these yeah. mics. Oh my gosh. Um okay, so Spielberg. Spielberg. Change of topic, change of I I'm, I'm going to I'm going to move on from this. Uh Steven Spielberg <coughs> could not get any rights to Star Wars for Ready Player 1. So now this is still off topic, but it's Star Wars related. Star Wars related. So Definitely. for all of you guys don't, that don't know, Ready Player 1 is a pop culture movie. Uh, video game heavy movie, but it doesn't have any Star Wars. I I know a little bit about it's drawing Ready from Bl- so many fandoms. Whether you're yeah. like into um, fantasy, um, fantasy anything that we've anything that you're pretty much a fandom of, that's pretty much Ready Player One. Darth Helmet. except Star Wars. That's what Space we're balls. gonna. That's what we're gonna get into right now. I can't. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. So. I, this is so much to read. Someone's got to read it. I can't read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I this is it help. <laughs> Here, you want me to read it? Yes, please. Sure. Read it. I, by the way, I, as I've said a couple times, I'm dyslexic, so got it. Kinda, I got you. It's kind of hard to read. I'm blind in one eye, but I think. I can <laughs> Ready Player One is a pop culture movie and video game he- uh, video game heavy movie, but with no Star Wars. For those who don't know, Spielberg co-founded Amblin Entertainment with Kathleen Kennedy. And was even involved in in Lucas uh, with Lucas during the filming of the original, when the two of them bet 2.5 of their respective film percent of their respective films, Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, winning Spielberg 40 million adjusted for inflation. Um, if Spielberg couldn't get the rights to Star Wars. It looks like it's locked up under the mouse's thumb. I didn't write that. I just want to say, that is as a, a resident yeah. of the great Those city are... of Anaheim, I didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these are these are these are notes from uh, again our. Uh, so uh, let me ask you guys this: Has anybody RJ? read the book? I have not. I you know shamefully I have not okay. as well too. I so know because what I'm wondering like, by this is how could you not? What about you, Chris? No, I haven't. Okay, so <laughs> I I know just from the trailer, and I have the book, but I haven't read it yet. That there's obviously tons and tons of references to all things '80s, which is apparently in this in this universe of Ready Player One. That is like. The decade that everyone just adores. So uh, Iron when, Giant became being one of those. Iron prominent. Giant. You see, I know you see Freddy Krueger at one point. He's driving the DeLorean from Back to the Future. So my guess is that in the original novel, there's probably something from Star Wars in there that Spielberg wanted to include as well mm-hmm. and couldn't get the rights. Yeah, I mean, like Disney is very, very uh, lock and key, or you know, glove and thumb on everything that is a Disney property. I couldn't think of a better thing. Glove and thumb. I'm, I'm. See, I'm already thinking Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> you're too you're soon. so ready. Yeah, too soon. Too soon. Another month ago. No. Yeah, we got another month. We we got we got some stuff to. Do. Yeah, Disney. Disney is love. Is let me as as far I I know, I know this is gonna be like a, a joke, in, in, inside and running joke between, uh, Marvel fans. Even though you know Marvel's gonna be on our next podcast. Um, uh, but Geek it's, Radio at six p.m. Right. Plug. Geek Radio six p.m. <laughs> Join us live. Um. They there's like Marvel snipers, you mm-hmm. know, and it's the same thing that can go with Disney. Disney snipers are like basically no. If you mention anything about this and spoil anything about this, you're out. Like it, this happens at conventions, and I think the same type of approach has happened with Ready Player One and just their just their products in general. They want to protect their franchises so much and not let it be open. And I think that's yeah, that's quite a that's quite <clears throat> an interesting aspect into looking in, into the past relationship between Spielberg and uh, Kathleen Kennedy, is and like Lucasfilm well, in general. You know, I mean. yeah. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they want to do so, that? I guess we would love to see Star Wars in Ready Player One. Well, some reference my, my to question it. then is maybe maybe somebody that's watching right now can <coughs> message us uh, if anybody that's read it knows if Star Wars was used in the novel and in in what way. Like maybe the way that the characters were portrayed in the film, it wasn't something Disney was willing to sign off on at all. Yeah, or uh, Lucasfilm. We'd whoever, love to hear some ultimately. feedback. If there's anybody that has that type of knowledge, great. Yeah, Share please, that with us. Please let us know. 
Yeah, this is a part of this is an open community discussion. So you know anything, anything and almost <laughs> almost everything goes. Because um, it seems like if it was in some in a really positive light, there wouldn't be that big of an issue of let them letting them borrow a character for a world that's clearly fictional when yeah. you're basically inside a game. Um, so it almost makes me wonder if if it was the characters were used in the novel in a way that they didn't want to give them the rights to do on the big screen during a time when they're putting out Star Wars films. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, going to send out a message here to anybody who is willing to respond. Um, let, let's let's. Get I can some actually feedback. answer that one. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay. I did the. There I we did, go. I did the research, and it looks like the X-wing had an important part in mm, in the novel. Um, that makes. Yeah. I could see that. So, okay, so there's so so we have reference of Star Wars in the novels, but yes, not in the movie. But not in the movie. Okay, so that's at least one thing why, you know. I mean, I, I get it, because of how Disney is. I don't get it. I mean, I just <laughs> I'm thinking, sure it just came down to money. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it would be a huge. I, they they I mean, would probably from a, like, yeah, give us like five million dollars in Spielberg. Exactly, like, like that would be no. that would be so much in budget for, probably for the oh, movie reference. and the distributors. Some type of reference to Star Wars would be like, okay, if you're gonna use one of our things, that's copyrighted material. We are gonna have you're gonna have to pay us X amount of money. No pun intended. X amount of money. X um, X, X wing. X. I get it. Um, to include our material I mean, in your in our movie. Yeah, I mean, like, movie, I'm sorry. I'm wondering if, I mean, th- there's ways to get around it. Um, obviously, like as I said before, um, there's ways to get around Star Wars references and see that there are references to like other movies that have like parodies of, you know, Star Wars like Spaceballs. Or references to it. References like you know. So they have a flying Winnebago instead, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it was probably one of those things where it's like, well, why should we pay for this when there's probably a lot of other stuff that was left out of the novel as well, and we can just say, rather than have him drive around in the DeLorean and then jump in an X-Wing, we'll just stick to the DeLorean and save X number of millions of dollars, however much it was. Yeah, and I mean, it I'm sure it was like away 10 from million. The movie. Yeah, yeah, it does it's, it's like, oh, yeah, there's a reference, but it's not there. Oh, it's well, just eye candy. It's it, yeah. just somebody would be like, oh, cool, there was an X-Wing, and yeah. the story is probably just fine without it. Yeah, I mean, like, unless if there's something, like, major that the X-Wing did in the m- book that and if that was the case if it was like a major plot point in the book then it wouldn't they would have paid for it yeah Mm -hmm. i'm actually more bummed to know that that they weren't able to reach any agreement with disney because i was hoping not having not read the book i was hoping there'd be some reference to tron in this having them be in a video game in a time when it was like they were all crazy in the 80s now in the 80s right just because it didn't have a um (coughs) a agreement on star wars you know it's tron is a different franchise and a different ip so it's possible it could be my hopes are a little let's just say my expectations are i actually do know that there is reference to tron and ready player in the book or you know for sure in the movie okay yeah i figured Um, there would be but now which i'm still waiting for tron 3 Oh, d- um, not happening. So I, don't I, wait too long. I, I, yeah, I don't think that's. Right. If anything, you're going to get a reboot. But that's a story for. I hope they do a reboot. Yeah, that is, that is, which is our next show. Um, Are we going to talk about? We'll talk about Tron. <laughs> three, about if, Tron. If, if we exactly. run into, I can talk about weeks. Tron all day, all night. So I love Tron so much. Um, but we're not going to get into it. That's yes, a whole different podcast. That's a whole, that's a, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, the dude. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> the dude. The dude. <laughs> Uh, Lauren just looks so confused. I'm like, guys, what um, are we talking about? Tron. No, <laughs> Tron is. The dude needs I'm to like, be in so every off movie. <laughs> the dude, dude is in, in every movie. movie. It, yeah, absolutely. Um, really quick off topic. The dude is a character that Jeff Bridges played back in the 90s in a movie called The Big Lebowski. Um, and Jeff Bridges plays... Flynn. Flynn right? Kevin in, Flynn. Kevin Flynn in... Tron. The original Tron and, and Tron, uh, Tron Legacy. Tron and Legacy. Movie in forever, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, tonight, 8 yeah. o'clock on our new podcast, The Grid. <laughs> 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 We're going to be talking only about Tron, Tron. so just, just hop on with us. And that'll, be in, that'll be an all-Patrick show. Yeah, it's just going to be So me. if you're not going <laughs> to be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Tron is the best. I actually saw... Call in if you agree. I saw Tron Legacy at the El Capitan uh, opening day when it came out a couple years ago. When did that come out? Like 2009? 2012? It was a while Somewhere in between 9 ago. and 12. Yeah. Uh, probably, I, 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 I think, think 10 was, or 11. I think it was 2012. I'm not entirely mm-hmm. sure. Chris, do some research. Please let us know. Um, 
Tron crossover with Star Wars. It came out in 2010. Whoa. There we go. Okay. That's what I called it. Ten. Oh, you got it. <laughs> I know some Good things. Good job. I know a few things about a few things. Uh, that was know, like that one Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh, nope. Different podcast. What? Never mind. I was, gonna say, I was gonna say. I was gonna say like that Doctor Strange reference where he uh, was in the hospital. We're so off topic. We're, we're um, definitely off topic. But do we have any additives to this episode to wrap it up? Because it is time to wind down because we have run out of stories to talk about. Unless if anybody has anything in the comments that you want to add about Star Wars. Mark Hamill is having a great St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> that is that. very true. Did you see that? He is in Dublin, right? Yes. Dublin, yeah. Celebrating his heritage. And Is that him or is his doppelganger? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> nah, it's him. It has to be him. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for uh, listening and watching on Facebook. Uh, listening on iTunes, however you listen. We're getting stuff on iTunes this week, I promise you guys. Um, I'm actually going to be working with you mm-hmm. later on today about that. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to the Hall Feed. My name is Claire. I'm Lauren. Ron. And Patrick. Tron rules. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening. We appreciate everything that you guys do, and we will see you guys next week. And we will, uh, some of you guys will be on the next show, so stick around for about five to ten minutes while we do our switchover into Geek Radio. Thank you so much for KP, uh, so thank you so much to KPFK for letting us use your studios and everything else, and We appreciate it, and we will see you guys all next time. I'm not your father, Sam. Uh, Oh, there is one thing I do want to add. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, there's one thing I do want to add. Um, So next week, we're going to be at WonderCon. Yep. Yes. So the Holofeed is uh, taking a week-long break, and we're going to just have a geek radio-themed, geeky, convention-esque live stream next weekend from 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know we will reiterate that at the end of uh, Geek Radio as well as the anime show. But thank you guys so much for listening and yeah, see you guys next time. May the Force be Be with with you. you.